Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about evidence for Planet 9 and specifically we're going to be talking about 5 pieces of evidence discovered over the past 2 years that kind of tell us that it's very likely that Planet 9 might actually exist somewhere out there. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So whether Planet 9 is real or not, uh, I guess time will tell, but for now the evidence and the mathematics behind uh, this evidence tell us that either there are five unreasonable puzzles we have to solve about our solar system, or Planet 9 is the reason for all of those five specific things that are happening that we are observing. Now, today we're going to discuss these five things, discover it, and uh, I guess published by several scientists around the globe from, um, from about 2015 up to about now, which is 2017. And they're all kind of point at the evidence that Planet 9 might actually be real. Now, we've talked about some of these in previous videos, but today I'm going to kind of summarize the main points. So, first of all, what is Planet 9? Well, if you have never heard of this or don't really exactly know what's going on, we think that there is another planet, and specifically a relatively large planet, possibly even something like 10 masses of Earth in mass, also known as a super-Earth, orbiting somewhere out there uh, quite far away, way, way farther away than Pluto, and way, way farther away than most other planets, um, even past uh, some of the most distant planets, like, for example, Sedna, or I guess in this case, dwarf planets. Uh, now, I wanted to actually first show you the simulation that indicates this evidence, and this is the piece of evidence number one. Uh, so this right here is Planet 9. It has a very eccentric orbit. It also has a very far away orbit. At, and currently, according to these predictions, it might be as far away as... Uh, let's just take a look at the actual semi-major axis here. Uh, in the distance, on average is about 700 astronomical units, the eccentricity is about 0.6, but uh, the current distance from, from the Sun is close to about 1100 astronomical units. Now, um, because it's so far away, it probably doesn't have a lot of effect on other objects, but it seems that um, because it's actually also very massive, and Neptune right here, the farthest planet currently known to us, um, is even more massive, all of the objects between them can only be influenced either by one or another. Now, Sedna, one of the objects we discovered in the last few years, is a very interesting dwarf planet that has a very eccentric orbit and uh, seems to be a little bit too far away for Neptune to be influenced by. So, there is this really unusual mystery and we also discovered six other objects that you can kind of see here. They don't really have cool names yet. They are mostly have just dates in their names that also have similar eccentric orbits and kind of a very similar inclination to. And you can kind of, you can see all of this together if you just click on orbits. Now, if I were to, for a second, remove Neptune for, from here just to accelerate my game a little bit and to wait for Planet 9 to get to its closest approach to the sun, Basically, it's perigee, and there is Planet 9 right there. It's going to approach this possibly in the next few thousand years. Um, you'll notice that at its closest, it actually comes close enough to influence all of these six objects. And we think that because of this, over millions and billions of years, it very likely changed the orbit of the six objects to be where, what it is now. So basically, it made them more eccentric, and... Um, made them uh, basically have these very similar positions in space that you can see right here. So that is one of the main, sort of, I guess, the first uh, possible proof that Planet 9 is out there. Second proof is in regards to the actual inclinations of these objects. And as you can see, they're also very similarly inclined. Basically, if, if this was the plane of orbit, you can see that they actually have a very similar plane of orbit as if something shifted them a little bit up. Which is very unusual because 
there's nothing out there that's mass enough to do it except for possibly this unusual undiscovered planet. And this tilt is approximately 30 degrees um, and they all seem to have it. So this is actually something very unusual and very hard to explain otherwise. The third explanation is if you actually go to um, our actual solar system and look at other planets. Now, there's been a very unusual mystery that could still not be explained otherwise, but if you basically look at most of the planets, including Jupiter, um, you'll see that they also have a bit of inclination to the plane. And you could see this inclination by scrolling down right here and looking at this number. So for Jupiter, it's about 130, uh, one degree, uh, 1.3 degrees. For Mars, it's about um, 1.8. Then Earth, surprisingly, doesn't have much. Uh, Venus has three. Mercury has seven. Saturn has 2.4. Uh, Uranus has 0.7. And Neptune has 1.7. So they really shouldn't have any inclination, though. They should actually be aligned with the plane because that's how essentially the solar system started. So something shifted all of them in a very similar way, um, sort of a little bit this way. And what this something is, we don't really know, but it's possible that Planet Nine did it, and this would explain this unusual shift for all of these planets. And so this was evidence number three, or I guess kind of a potential proof number three. And the evidence piece number four, comes from uh, the fact that using various simulations with the existence of Planet Nine, um, we assumed that there would be other objects that would have very high inclination, including objects orbiting like 90 degrees to the plane, because Planet Nine would eventually shift them this way. And over the last uh, few years, we actually did discover a few objects, and I've talked about them in previous videos. Some of these objects, uh, and mo most of them, or if not all of them, are just minor planets and um, relatively small asteroid-like objects, they do seem to orbit pretty much almost 90 degrees in relation to the plane. There seems to be no better explanation for why they would be doing this, uh, so it's kind of possible that it's actually the planet's nine fold, that they have these unusual almost 90 degree orbits. And similarly, we also discovered objects in our solar system that seem to almost be orbiting the opposite direction. So basically, uh, their orbits are, I'm going to just show you visually, instead of going with the flow, they actually seem to be going against the flow. So in other words, uh, they're tilted so much that their orbit is basically retrograde. It, it goes in the opposite direction to everything else in the solar system. So let me just kind of demonstrate this using the trails here. And you'll see that even though everything, or for the most part, almost everything is going counterclockwise, this guy here is kind of moving clockwise-ish, although with a very high inclination. So we've discovered a few of these and uh, there is, seems to be no better explanation than a very large massive object on the outskirts of Kuiper's belt that would influence these um, unusual objects to have such an orbit. So these five pieces of evidence, uh, I guess most of them have to do with different types of orbits of different objects on the outskirts in the Kuiper's belt, seem to indicate that, well, it looks like that there is a slight possibility that the object that we are calling Planet Nine today might actually be real. Now, it wouldn't be very close to the sun, and this is why we're having a problem finding it, and it would also probably be slightly inclined to the sun because it seems to be causing all of these orbital shifts, and it would probably be really far away, like at least 600 times, but possibly even 1,000 times as far away uh, from the sun as our beautiful planet Earth. So this is why we're having so much t trouble seeing it because it's basically like looking for a tiny, tiny, tiny dark spot in the sky from really, really far away distance. And we're barely even able to distinguish um, some of the objects that we know about. And this is an object that we not only know nothing about, but we don't even know where to look. So maybe in the future we'll be able to not only see it, but actually finally predict its actual orbit. But for now, it's still a speculation. 
So there's still a slight chance that these five mysteries, of orbital mysteries, might actually have five separate solutions. Or one solution that we haven't thought about that is not Planet Nine, assuming that we don't find it. For now though, we're going to go with the mathematical statistical analysis and think that maybe, just maybe, it's somewhere out there and it's just waiting for us to be discovered. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the video tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Consider supporting this channel on Patreon and most importantly, subscribe if you still haven't. 